two stories. Here's the one thing that you need to hear tonight. And it's about President Obama. Look, the guy has been in the office for two weeks now, and he has already given half of the country reason to say either I told you so or whoa, 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 what's going on? The people who voted against him, some said he's a Marxist. I said that. He's a socialist. Look at his policies. Look how he was raised. They were laughed at. The less informed voters whispered, you know, he's a Muslim. And they feared that at best he would be easy on the terrorist. The people were dismissed as kooks. But now, if I'm the president of the United States and this country is as split as ours is, what would the first thing you would do? Well, if you were advising me, what would you say, Mr. President? Go out and give the country a little bit of a hug, give them some love, extend an olive branch, and be everybody's president. But what has Barack Obama done? He turns the message of hope and change into scandal, double standards, and gloom and doom. And he shoves the most outrageous spending package the world has ever seen right down the throats of anybody that disagrees with him. He uses dire warnings to scare us. I thought it was the, the, uh, the climate of fear being replaced with the climate of hope. Last night, Obama said that he just inherited a huge deficit, and he wrapped that re with a red bow. So, of course, the best way to overcome this deficit is with a giant spending bill, not giving you your money back to spend, but having the government spend it, which is socialist in nature. And after all of the claims of, I want bipartisanship, the president goes to Nancy Pelosi and says, draft up a bill. She drafts up a, a trillion dollar spending package without a single Republican voice. And in it, she includes condoms and overseas abortions and $87 million for a polar ice breaking ship. I thought the ice caps were melting. When the president was campaigning, he said, you know, hey, my past is my past. No one was even allowed to mention that he had Muslim family members. But starting at the inauguration, that all changed. We are a nation of Christians and Muslims, Jews and Hindus, and non-believers. Okay. That is the first time that, he, uh, that a president has ever mentioned non-believers. That is the first time a president put them in that order. Christians, Muslims, Jews. Okay, fine, he's bringing out an olive branch overseas. But then he did his first interview with an Arab TV station. Here's what he said there. I have Muslim members of my family. Uh, I have uh, lived in Muslim countries. Okay, great, uh, fine, I guess that helps if you're extending the olive branch. But why is it front page news now if it was such a secret before the election? Maybe it's because those who whispered that Obama might go soft on terrorism are starting to look a little smarter than the rest of us. I mean, first it was no more war on terror. Then it was no more Gitmo. All right, we can see that. I mean, you know, people disagree. But his latest move, I, I don't know how you agree with this, put him into a totally different territory. President Obama has ex issued an executive order to stop the trial and drop the charges without prejudice against the guy who planned the bombing of the USS Cole and killed 17 service members. I mean, does this guy realize how bad that sounds to the average American? I mean, I understand. You can try him again if you can get a judge to do it. It's starting to sound like cruel and unusual punishment, quite frankly, Mr. President. Obama has every intention, he says, of trying this terrorist just as long he get, as he gets the judge he likes to hear the case. Is there anybody, anybody within the sound of my voice, not a Republican, not a Democrat, just an American that's worried about their country and says, wait a minute, wait a minute, Republicans, shut up, Democrats, shut up. Mr. President, sit down. What exactly are you doing? What is your end game? You know, it's amazing for a guy who understands image as much as this man does. How did he not notice that all of this is going to look really, really bad? How, how would you feel if you were the commander of the USS Cole?